All right, in this question, in this practice problem, we are going to work with the fundamental theorem of calculus. And um, we're given this graph here that does not have an equation intentionally, um, but we are given certain areas. And notice they're called areas, not integrals. So they're all signed positive, and we are going to have to worry about this one section underneath the x-axis will eventually have to be signed negative when we treat it as an integral instead of area. So this is the function little f, and we are assuming that little f is the derivative of big F. So that means that the derivative of big F is little f. And then this big F of negative 3 equals negative 10 is what we are calling our starting point or the initial condition or the initial value. So we want big F of 2. So I'm going to show you how to set this up. Basically, you're given big F of negative 3. You want big F of 2. So we're going to set up an integral from negative 3 to 2 of little f and by the fundamental theorem of calculus that has to equal big f of 2 minus big f of negative 3. So I've just really restated the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Through the graph I can calculate the integral of little f from negative 3 to 2 because I have from negative 3 to negative 1 I have 10 and then from negative 1 to 2, I have 30. So that total integral is going to be 40. So if I just rewrite this equation by adding f of big F of negative 3 to both sides, I'll get that big F of 2 equals big F of negative 3, which we're given as 10, negative 10. So here is my negative 10. And then add to that the 40 that I have gotten as this integral, and I find that big F of 2 is 30. And I can do that each time. The integral from um, negative 3 to 6, for example, is going to give me big F of 6 minus big F of negative 3. So perhaps it would be helpful to take my equation, um, my fundamental theorem of calculus equation, and rewrite like this big F of B, whatever our B is going to be, is going to be equal to big F of negative 3 plus the integral from negative 3 to whatever this value B is of little f. And I'm going to use this equation to answer the next two questions. So if I plug in, this is a B here, which kind of looks like a 6. I didn't do that intentionally but I would now want big F of 6. So I take my big F of negative 3, which was negative 10, and I add to it my integral from negative 3 to 6. So I have 10 plus 30 is 40, minus 8, because again it's the integral, so that's 32, plus 15. So I'm adding the integral, which equals 47. So big F of 6 must equal 37. Let's do it again for big F of negative 5. I start with big F of negative 3, which is negative 10. But now what I have to add to it is the integral from negative 3 to negative 5 of little f. And the reason why I wrote this out is to show you that I'm actually in the wrong order here. So whatever integral I get from negative 3 to negative 5, what I really need to do is negate it. So I'm going to have negative 10 minus the integral from negative 5 to negative 3. Makes my life a lot easier if I rewrite it in the correct uh, numerical order of the integral. So the integral from negative 5 to negative 3 is 15. So I have negative 10 minus 15, which gives me negative 25. So then let's talk about numbers 4, 5, and 6. Since the area under little f is positive, on the interval from 3 to negative 1, negative 3 to negative 1 right here, we know that big F must be increasing. Where little f is positive, where the derivative is above the x-axis, the function must be increasing. So now we're saying if the area under little f accumulates at an increasing rate, that just means that little f is increasing. Okay? That means if little f is increasing, we know that big F must be concave up on that interval from negative 3 to negative 1. 
Now let's look at the integral interval from negative 1 to 2. This area accumulates at a decreasing rate. That just means that little f is decreasing. Right here, it's going downward. So big F must be concave down. So we ask these three questions just to remind you that when you're graphing an antiderivative, you focus on the sign of the derivative function and whether or not the derivative function is increasing or decreasing. Because the next question, number seven, the, ultimate, the, the culminating question here, is asking us to graph the antiderivative function. Where are we going to start? Well, let's start by plugging in the values that we know to be on the antiderivative. So first of all, we know that big F of negative 3 is negative 10. We are given that. And then we found that big F of 2 is 30. So we're going to plot that point right here. And we know that big F of 6 is 37. So we are going to plot that point right here. Then we know that big F of negative 5 is negative 25. So that's good. We have four points plotted, but there were a couple of other points that we could plot. We knew that we could find out big F of negative 1 because if we start here at negative 10 or for our initial value and we accumulate 10, big F of negative 1 will actually be 0. So we know the x-intercept of our function. And then we've already figured out what big F of 2 is, but we could also figure out big F of 4 because we take big F of 2, which of course was 30, and we subtract 8 from it for this net signed area being below the x-axis. So that means that big F of 4 is going to be just 22, which is right here. So these are the only points that we can plot on the function. Now we can worry about increasing, decreasing, and concavity. So for the first section here, little f is positive but decreasing. So big F must be um, increasing but concave down. So on this interval here, connecting these two points, I am increasing but concave down. Now here, little f is positive and increasing. That means big F is going to be increasing and concave up. So I just need to switch concavity here and stay increasing. On the next interval, from negative 1 to 2, little f is still positive, so big F is still increasing. But now little f is decreasing, so big F needs to be concave down again. So once again, I'm just changing concavity. So I need to be concave down on this interval here to connect to the next point. Now, on 2 to 4, well, let's deal with 2 to 3 here little f is negative so big f is decreasing and little f is decreasing so big f is concave down so i need to be decreasing and concave down to here then i need to switch concavity because little f is now increasing so big f must be concave up right there and then last we have a section of the graph where little f is positive so big f is increasing and little f is is um, increasing so big F is concave up, and then I can complete my graph by being increasing and concave up. So finally, with the fundamental theorem of calculus, we get a fairly strong antiderivative graph.